Hello and welcome back to the What We Said podcast, everybody. Happy Tuesday. Today we're celebrating spring because the spring equinox, equinox is this week. I think it's some some says the 20th, some says the, or some sources I've read said the 20th, some the 21st. But it's in like a day or two. Yeah, nonetheless. What Okay, welcome back to the podcast. Happy Tuesday. Blah 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 blah. What does the groundhog what does he know? <laughs> I have <laughs> like, no idea. When they say he co- spring comes early, what does that mean? I don't know. The equinox changes or like it's just the weather's better. Is it always the same? The equinox days? I'm pretty sure. I'm, I'm sure they don't change. I think it is two days and then maybe every year it's one of those two days. Mm, okay. If I remember back to my seventh grade science class, it's like the 22nd or the 23rd or the 21st or the whatever. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I have a, I have I have the, the world. I have the world secrets on my fingertips. I could probably look it up, but what have you been up to? Google is absolutely insane. It's scary. It's. But I love let's it think so about much. that for a second. That you can Google anything, and you're just going to find the answer in 0.2 seconds. And also, if my computer takes more than that to load, I'm like, "Hello, <laughs> we're not in the 18th century yeah. here." Um. Wait. It says it's on oh, the 19th. It's today. It's this year, today. it's today. Spring is today. What are the four equinox dates? Okay, spring equinox this year is March 19th. Summer solstice. Okay, so there's solstice and equinox. Those are two different things. I honestly probably would have called it spring solstice. I don't know the Fun fact. Um, Summer solstice, June 20th. Autumn equinox, September 22nd. Winter solstice, December 21st. This year, mark your calendars, everybody. Mark your calendars. Yeah. Um, what have I been up to? Just, you know, hanging out. I still have been kind of just in, this is a perfect episode because I feel like I kind of have been in my like cleaning, organizing era. Um, maybe for not healthy reasons. I don't know. I feel like I'm trying to control some aspect of my life. Mm-hmm. And when other things feel out of my control, like, hmm, what can I control? My yeah. closet organization. Like, No, no, it's an instinct. You can blame it on that. Okay. It's an instinct. It's like when mothers start making their nests. Yeah. It's like, okay, got to get things prepped. Got to make this comfy, cozy for new life. Yeah. So I've kind of been in that, in that era for a little bit. I do feel like I'm starting to like, oh, I, I don't even want to say this because I'm going to get, everyone's going to be like, just wait. But it's like already <laughs> I'm kind of starting to feel like uncomfortable where I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Like sleeping, I'm waking up a lot throughout the night and I'm like aware of my stomach now more. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it's starting to grow more where like, I feel like it would Pants fluctuate, like, oh. like fluctuate a little more earlier where I was like, oh, like a little bump. And now I'm like, it doesn't ever like get Go smaller. Away. It's just like getting bigger and bigger, which makes sense. Cause she's obviously not getting any smaller. She's just growing. Yeah. But yeah, I feel like I'm, I'm starting to like understand just like the aches and pain. Like I'm starting to get lower back pain and just weird really? little things where I'm like, okay, I know, I know it's probably only going to get more intense, but like I'm starting to feel hints of it, all of that. Mm-hmm. So that's interesting. Yeah. That is an interesting feeling when you're, when you've never experienced like your stomach. I was t- asking Nick the other day, I'm like, do you ever just think what it would feel like to have this? Like if I just put a basketball on your shirt and you could never take it off. Yeah. So weird because yeah, your pants all of a sudden you're like, hmm, that's kind of tugging weird at a certain point. I can't like suck my stomach yeah. in to try and get through two chairs at a restaurant. Like I'm genuinely like, you have to move your chair. Sir. I know. <laughs> I was doing my makeup today and I like leaned over to do my mascara yeah. and I like kind of bumped and <laughs> I was like, that's another one. I always do that. <laughs> I was like, wait, I need to like get ready in my room because I can get closer to the mirror. Like, cause there's a huge... Anyway, just mm-hmm. weird little things where I'm like, okay, this is, and yeah. just like my even breathing. I've, my entire pregnancy I've had, um, literally when I was seven weeks, the child was the size of like an orange seed. I was like, Whew, like yeah. I couldn't breathe very much. And I feel like it's, pick, that's picking back up again. Yeah. For a little bit, it was doing better, but yeah, I'm just experiencing all the new, all the new pregnancy it's things. It's kind of fun and exciting. What's next? Yeah. What am yeah. I going to feel today? <laughs> I know. What, what, um, also the, my freckles have been getting a little bit darker. I've been mm-hmm. noticing like darker spots on my face, like just weird Melasma things. gang. Yeah. I was like doing my makeup and I thought it was like, um, eyeshadow and I was like trying to 
Yeah, it just appears get so it off. fast. Yeah, too. and it that's was the thing. I'm like, okay, that's a new freckle, I guess. Like, yeah. or it's just super dark. So just a lot of weird, mm-hmm. a lot of weird things. But and they they truly, I think the thing about pregnancy specifically is, I feel the reason I talk about it so much is because it happens so fast. So it's so shocking every mm-hmm. time. Like the melasma, it'll just appear one day, and it's like, oh, okay, or. Even I'm starting to get to the point where I think I talked about this a little bit. My rings are starting to feel a little tight mm-hmm. or the swelling starting. And it just happens overnight. Like one day I'm like, oh my gosh, my feet and my hands are Fine. not swelling. I beat the swelling this time. And then the next day I'm like, oh, okay. So my rings, I can't wear certain rings anymore. Got it. It's so weird. It's it a weird experience. So, so yeah, that's my that's my update. Nice. Nothing, honestly, that groundbreaking. But I'm excited to get into all this. Wait, let me see if I had anything else on my on my um list do you feel liberated that you can say she now yes talking about her I do I actually do feel liberated it's so nice (laughs) to not have to hide anything where is my oh thanks for liking our curtains you guys (laughs) and this is the last time we'll talk about it (laughs) but thank you for the nice feedback yeah that was actually (laughs) surprising surprising I I was surprised and very pleasantly surprised Mm -hmm. by people being like oh it looks really cute like I see the vision I was like okay thank you thank you um faith in us for once oh just that uh, my my two updates that I had written down were that I got my first prenatal massage oh yeah and it was the best experience and I'm just like is that the one Beth got you because the one I got you is not as luxury as that (laughs) really (laughs) it was the one Beth got me but it's only because they had um so Beth and Chelsea both got me massages for my birthday and, um, I was trying to like space them out because, you know, I don't want to want to use. Yeah. So, but the one Beth got me, they had, uh, availability literally the next day and I like wanted to go because my back was kind of hurting. So I did that one. Um, so yeah, I haven't gone to the one. Hey, you're like, I'm waiting in the waiting room. They had drinks for me. I'm like, you will not experience that at this place. <laughs> this place, I think, is a chiropractor office. Oh, okay. So it's very office vibes oh, okay. of a massage. It's not more like, like, yeah, no. Yeah. I mean, it's relaxing in the room. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. But it's definitely, it's more like a maintenance. Yeah. Not like a relaxing spot. Well, you know, like way, she's going to be greatly disappointed <laughs> no. when she pulls up to the like complex that this is at. No, it'll be so nice. It just feels so good to, so good. oh my gosh. Would I, they do like your side? I just, oh, I wanted to so bring good. it up because I feel like, well, obviously I've never been pregnant, so I never had a prenatal massage, but it's like, it's different than a normal massage because like you can't really lay on your back. So you're like laying on your sides or you're like elevated a little. It's kind of different, but oh my gosh, like I wanted to say if you have a pregnant friend, like that's the gift. Mm -hmm. That is the gift to give is a massage like certificate if you can, because yeah, like, because you wouldn't think about, because I got one because my mom gave me that certificate, but it's not, it's not something you would think of yourself. Like I'm going to do a prenatal massage, especially if you've never had one. Yeah. Especially if you've never been pregnant also, like I would never think to do that. You don't even really know they exist. No. You guys, Rocket Money is amazing. They have been saving me money recently. I have been really trying to get my finances in order with all of my expenses for my house and stuff. And a really good way to do that is to check on some, you know, subscriptions, monthly payments that are coming out of your account that maybe you're unaware of, you forgot about. Maybe you signed up for a free trial for something and then you just haven't been using that service or whatever the case may be. Rocket Money is so nice for this and I have been personally using it and I feel like this is just such a great sponsor to have because it can actually genuinely help you save money and cut costs where you need to. So if you're trying to be in your financially stable and smart era, then this is for you. So Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending and helps lower your bills. You can see all of your subscriptions in one place and see if there's something you don't want. You can just cancel it with a tap. You never have to get on the phone with customer service, which is so freaking nice. You know what I just caught thanks to Rocket Money is that I've been paying for a streaming service that I never use, but I bought it to watch Love Island UK. Mm -hmm. And I forgot about it. Have not watched it in a very long time. So thank you Rocket Money for that. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over $500 million in canceled subscriptions. I love Rocket Money. 
It literally has saved me so much money. So stop wasting money on things that you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash what we said. Again, that is rocketmoney.com slash what we said. Rocketmoney.com slash what we said. Go check it out. But it is literally like Beth was telling me, she's like, if I could have gotten one every day, I would. Mm-hmm. Like she, she's like, this is just, it's so nice, especially as you progress. And so yeah. anyway, it's true. gift idea for your pregnant friends if you need one um but yeah sure. that was so amazing and I literally so actually um you know squeeze mm-hmm. I think have you ever been no so squeeze is like a massage place um and they have different locations but they had one in LA and when Leif and I lived there we had like a membership there so we'd get basically you just pay like a certain amount and you can go once a month uh and during COVID it shut down obviously but then I don't know exactly how it worked, but like we were still paying for it. And basically we got a bunch of credits Ooh. that still are in place. It's really? been like three years. So Leif can get like 10 free massages now. I, I think I canceled mine or something. I can get like four. So I'm like, I am ready ready for my, like I already have the credits. Like I don't even mm-hmm. have to pay for it. It's literally free. Well, I paid for it at one point, but it was like three years ago. So I'm like, it's free now. So I am ready to just get Mm -hmm. my massages like twice a month until my pregnancy ends. Um, But yeah, so that was really, really nice. Oh, my other update um, was just that Leif and I are going to go on a little baby moon uh, next week. So I don't really have any Oh, yeah, yeah. You scared me because we're batching this. I'm like, I'm like, I'll be gone for the rest of the month. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. So that'll be really fun. We're just going to Mexico and- It'll be so fun. So nice. I wanted somewhere a little closer. I'm just not in the mood to like try. Initially when I got pregnant, I was like, maybe we could go to like Italy or something. And now I'm like, (laughs) that's not, that's not looking like, that's not even something I want to do at this Mm -hmm. point. Also because of the time of year, like if it was summer, I feel like I would maybe be down to go somewhere else, but- just springtime. I don't know. I'm like, I'd rather go somewhere closer and just yeah. easier. So relaxing. Yeah. We're going to celebrate our eight year anniversary and our baby moon. I'll give you guys updates about that later. Fun. But I'm excited. So we've been be so nice. prepping for that. Um, yeah. I forgot we've never talked about this. Speaking of Mexico and baby moons. So my sister-in-law, my sister and brother-in-law, it's Nick's twin sister and her husband. They are also pregnant, which is so exciting because they did IVF for a long time. And she is so close to my due date and we're both having boys. So fun. And so they're going to be cousins, obviously. And it's just very exciting. And um, they went on their baby moon to Mexico and it went viral on TikTok. You might have seen it. This is hilarious. It is so funny. They went to a resort in Mexico. You've been there or something. Yeah, it's um, like the Velas Resort. Like yeah. we went with Aspen and Parker like mm-hmm. a year ish ago. Um, but I think the one they went to, well, that's kind of part of the story. Yeah. But I think it's like a different sector a of it, or like yeah. a new version of it, or something. Yeah. So they signed up for this baby moon. They went, and I think maybe didn't. I don't know if they knew that it was brand new or something, but it is new. And they went and they realized like three days into it that it's they were- It's a massive resort. Massive. Like those massive ones where you see where there should be hundreds, hundreds of people. And they were the only ones. <laughs> he has all of this footage, uh, my brother-in-law, of the pools. Like they'd be like, we'd walk to dinner and there's like eerie music in the background and there's not, not one other person there. You guys, not one other guest. They literally went so, it got millions of views and they got <laughs> interviewed by the news because they were, it was just so shocking. But that, that was their baby moon. They were like, wait, I was are we the only ones here? Dying over that. And then yeah. th- at the end, when they were like, you're not alone or something. <laughs> the, did you see that when they were like all lined up? All lined up. Like oh, all, yeah. all the staff. All the staff. Because mm-hmm. I think it went viral while they were on their trip. Yeah. Like they were documenting. Um, yeah, he was like, no one's here. <laughs> they were like, we thought it was weird. Like we came to the hotel and we were getting ready for dinner. Mm-hmm. or something and and like no one was around we're like oh maybe they're just like also getting ready for dinner so we'll yeah. see people when we get to the restaurant and then they like went to the restaurant and there was no one there and no like, and they they would like look out their window at night and there would be like little bonfires like lit and he was like but no one be sitting at this are they doing all this for nobody like what is happening 
It is it's honestly a wonder to me how places just in general stay in business. Yeah. Like Leif and I always talk about that. We'll be driving somewhere and we'll see all these restaurants that we've like, you know, even near us, like, mm-hmm. or in complexes. And I'm like, not that I think the world revolves around me. It's like, oh, because I don't go there. No one does. But like certain things that are very niche. I'm like, like a battery store or something. I'm like, yeah. how are you in business? Like by the coast of California, paying rent in this building. Mm-hmm. I know no when, one's going there. No, like, especially when other popular places will be like going out of business. It's like, it's so weird. Wait, how, how are you? Or when you go into some place in the middle of the day, like you do go there yeah. and there's never anyone there. You're like, am I the only customer? It's so crazy. Yeah. Anyways, that is hilarious. It was though. so funny. I was dying over their videos. You can probably and- look it up. It was very viral. Yeah, it was yeah. super viral. <laughs> it was so funny. Uh, oh my anyways, gosh. But slay, honestly. Yeah. That, you just get I mean, by yourself. kind of kind of nice to have the yeah. resort to yourself. Kind of weird, though. Kind of spooky. So, sometimes I think it sounds nice in theory to be like, I've, I've felt like that before, too, in certain scenarios. It's like, oh, it would be nice to just like have the place to ourselves. And then you do, and you're like, you don't realize how yeah. much like other people kind of add to the ambiance of where that's you are. That's true. That's true. It's like, wait, I feel kind of weird now. That I'm just, yeah, that's true. <laughs> whenever we, um, it's like a Marcus Johns is so like, if no one's at a restaurant, he's like, we got to go. Like if, if we walk in and there's like not that many people seated, yeah. he's like, no. Like, oh, we got to leave. We got to leave. Oh, like, oh, oh. Because this it's is not, not the vibe. Like, it's like, you got to have people around mm-hmm. you. I'm like, I kind of get that. Yeah. It's like also maybe, a sign of if the food is good. Right there's no one here it's friday night yeah not the vibe no i'm willing to wait a little bit in line for yeah. something good yeah so funny jeez well uh, any other, anything else no that was pretty much it that'll be fun excited to hear the update yeah yeah i'm excited to go it'll be it'll be relaxing yeah. and nice i don't know if i can look at pictures of it though because it'll make you sick when i went there i was so sick oh. so sick i was like five weeks, but it was my first pregnancy and I just found out and we were on our honeymoon yeah, or not honeymoon anniversary trip yeah, that turned into kind of a baby moon. But yeah. I was so sick every day there. And also actually, no, there wasn't a lot of people cause it was kind of during COVID times. Mm-hmm. It was like 2021. So it'd been like a year and everyone was still iffy about it. Yeah. Um, so people weren't really traveling or staying there, but mm-hmm. I wish you the best. I hope I'm not I'm alone sure at beautiful. the hotel. <laughs> Stay <laughs> yeah. tuned. I'm sure you won't be. No. It's- perfect time of year yeah yeah um today we're going to talk about springtime this is kind of a follow-up to last week's episode like march manifestation but Mm -hmm. you know it's seasonal and something on my vision board this year was this podcast is sponsored by squarespace we really really love squarespace it's been with us through thick and thin through it all through all the side hustles i have used so many of their templates for different websites and we've used it for Balance Boss, for online courses. JC's used it, and she can speak to that a little bit later. But for her businesses, I've used it for scheduling clients. When I was doing health coaching, I've used it to sell digital products. I've used it to, you know, showcase my writing or blog, whatever it is. And it's done a great job every single time. And it's so easy. That's what I love about it is that you can make a beautiful website. And that's why I love it because Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Whether you're just starting out or managing a growing brand, Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything from products to content to time, all in one place, all on your terms. Whether you want to use it for selling digital or physical products, you can do either of those things on Squarespace. So you can have an online store that sells pretty much anything or a service, anything like that. They also have an asset library so you can upload, organize, and access all your content from one place. It makes things very organized. And they have flexible website templates so you can get started with one of their professional website templates with designs for every category and use case. So if you're a photographer, they'll have specific ones that have great galleries and things like that. Or if you want to sell something, they have better ones for online stores. They have a lot of different templates that you can customize your look, update content, and add features to fit your unique needs. 
And you can also have access to analytics, use insights to grow your business, learn where your site visits and your sales are coming from, which is super valuable. Analyze what channels are most effective and just improve your website from there and kind of build a marketing strategy based on top keywords, things that people are looking at, most popular products, stuff like that. So head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to www.squarespace.com slash what we said to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Again, that is squarespace.com slash what we said to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Go check it out. I had a couple things relating to seasons, like really leaning into the natural cycle of seasons and what it means and kind of helping have that guide me to go with the flow of the year. Mm -hmm. We, I think we mentioned this at the beginning of the year that we kind of wanted to do seasonal episodes Mm -hmm. this year, like not all of them, but just at least, um, at the beginning of the year, spring, summer, well, I guess the beginning of the year is just winter, but, um, yeah, fall and winter kind of do an episode dedicated to like what's what's the um, purpose of the season yeah, intentions how, for the season intentions how can we like kind of lean into mm-hmm. this time of year and I like that I know and personally I love spring because it's my birthday it's airy season and I've always just loved I feel like it's kind of I think you kind of were talking about the winter one when we I mean like you were researching it and it was kind of like Capricorn season oh. as well so it's yeah, like yeah. it's you know you have lean favorites. into yeah. yeah to what you're when you're born. Um, so I've always loved spring a lot, and I think a lot of people do because it just and I'll tell you why a lot of people love spring. But I'm going to read some, some facts, facts from people that are not me that know a little bit more than me. Okay, first of all, what is the equinox? So in the northern hemisphere, the spring equinox, also known as the vernal equinox, begins on Sunday, March 20th. But this was in 2022, so. We know better. It starts today. Um, Marks when the sun crosses the equator line heading north. And this is the time where we experience more daylight hours. So that's basically it. Um, What does this mean spiritually for us? So across different cultures, and I was going to read a couple different things that have to do with spring cleaning specifically, because that's kind of the vibes of spring is newness, cleanliness, kind of a refresh. Um, Spring is seen as the time of rebirth and renewal, making it a good time to cleanse your space or let go of things that no longer serve you. So one of the things that I saw that was like a cultural tradition that kind of goes into this and a lot of different cultures, again, um, for years and years, like during history have different ways of celebrating spring, but they're all kind of the same. Yeah. I will not pronounce these right. I just know it. So I'm so sorry. It's called no ruse, now ruse, nav ruse. I don't know also known as Iranian New Year, begins alongside the vernal equinox and literally translates to New Day, while many religions also celebrate the start spring as a time of light triumphing o- triumphing over darkness, like with Passover and Easter. Mm. So, Well, first of all, spring cleaning is a phrase for a reason. Mm-hmm. Like that yeah. is, I feel like out of all the seasons, yeah, this is the one about like cleansing and cleaning and just getting- Newness. Newness, yeah. yeah. For Which sure. Is nice. So I have, I um, found this really good vlog too. And this is the fantastic cleaners. Like, and it's Chelsea Jade's yeah. YouTube channel. <laughs> Go watch it. I know a ton <laughs> about this. Um, and it talks all about the origin of spring cleaning and why spring is so perfect for this time of year. And it was mentioning, you know, that Iranian festival of like cleanliness newness it's an ancient t- tradition that comes with you change clothes you know you just do various post winter repairs in your house mm-hmm. the weather is better so you can open your windows it's literally a time to get rid of dust mm-hmm. and things in your house that have been acquiring over winter time mm-hmm. they also have a jewish tradition of spring cleaning so this goes back to like ancient jewish custom of thoroughly cleaning the house in preparation for passover which is a jewish feast holiday. And then in northern parts of Europe and America, late winter to early spring was the best time to, like I said, dust your house because the weather's warm. You can let fresh air in and it's, but it's still not hot so that you still have a little bit of um, energy. And it literally is the best time to get rid of insects, things like Mm. that. So you don't have to heat your homes. You can finally get rid of like soot and, you know, 
back in the day, people used those for fireplaces and heating up their houses and things like that, mm -hmm. which I thought was very interesting. And there's obviously a lot of different history of spring cleaning and everything, but just know it goes way deeper, way deeper than Instagram and Insta graphics. Yeah. Yeah. You know, of spring cleaning. So it's I ancient tradition. Yeah. So a reason that spring cleaning is important as well. It's not just like, Oh, let's organize our closet or do things like that. Um, for cleaning your house or cleaning your space. Um, also, you can do this spiritually as well, cleansing in whatever way you want it to be. Better air quality. So mm -hmm. new life, um, you get rid of the dust. If you want to like plant seeds, a lot of people will plant new life in the springtime. Um, gives you better air quality. Reduces stress and anxiety. Obviously, when your house is cleaner, blah, 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 we know. Mm -hmm. It's just nice to have a tidy living area. Spring cleaning helps with focus. So when you have a tidier place or um, living area, you're able to focus on different things that, you know, like creativity, different ideas, and it increases productivity. So that's a little history of spring cleaning. Also, not just with cleaning necessarily, but with springtime, there's tons of new life. So this is when a lot of animals give birth. Mm. And I was reading this. I wore a bunny Including on my shirt you. today for springtime. Not really. Cute. I was already wearing this. I was like, oh, it's a bunny. Because <laughs> it was talking about how in springtime, lots of new life is born. And a lot of cute animals are around. So you mm. see nature more. You mm -hmm. see like little puppies, kittens, bunnies. And that is good for your mental health. has a positive impact on humans when we see cute animals mm -hmm. I thought that was a cute little that is cute antidote because that is very springtime yes coded mm -hmm. is like little bunnies and stuff little chicks yeah obviously like Easter themes as well yeah um they play off of that as well yeah spring is known to be the most delightful season because you get more vitamin d you're more likely to be outside especially because in most places it's the middle weather. So it's not super hot. It doesn't get super hot. So if you live in Arizona, for example, you're actually more outside in spring than Midsummer, you are in the summer. Yeah, for sure. Depends on where you live, but I would say for the most yeah. part, spring is like some of the best weather exactly. for most places. And if it's really cold in the winter where you live, then spring is the first time you're getting out. So most people are experiencing the most exposure to vitamin D, mm. therefore feeling happier. Temperatures are moderate and they're more comfortable more sun equals less mental distress. Mm -hmm. That's just a fact. Um, also, a lot of people when they're leaving work because you have more daylight mm -hmm. during the day, you feel happier because... Oh, I love daylight. I like, know. When you leave work at five and it's dark, it's so depressing. You don't have time to do anything else. You just go home and sleep. I know. The days feel so short, mm -hmm. which, yeah. Yeah. And again, at the beginning of winter, we can celebrate it. But then I feel like by the end of winter, you're just sick of the darkness. Mm -hmm. You're I, ready. You, obviously, we cannot complain at all about really weather. Like mm -hmm. we live in a beautiful <laughs> yeah. place for as far as weather goes. Um, but like when it is rainy for like weeks on end or gloomy, it affects my mood so much. And I think like just growing up in Arizona where there's a lot of sunshine and, and living in California, those are the two main places I've lived Utah for a second, but yeah. even Utah, I didn't really live there in the like dead of winter. Like personally, it affects my mood so much. And maybe it's because I'm so used to sunshine. Yeah. But truly when it's like dark and gray and I, um, we have like these blackout shades that they're not fully blackout, but they're pretty dark. And when I like do the little remote and they go up and it's like mm -hmm. not that sunny, I'm like, Back to oh, bed. <laughs> like I do not want to get up. But when it's really sunny, I'm like, I'm ready to go. Like yeah, exactly. sunshine helps so much. So I love, I love when it starts to get more sunny. Yeah. And they were saying with, you know, people getting off of work and it being still sunny out, you have a couple hours of sunlight left. You're able to go out it's and do stuff. It's much more motivating too. Yeah. Like to be and like. socialize even. So then you're mm -hmm. feeling help. You're feeling more connected to your you know, so just society, community, yeah. and it's just all around. You, you can maybe take your kids to the park if you get home in time, or you can go hang Work out with your out, friends. Go to yeah. dinner. Yeah, it's like a different. More daylight means. Means happiness. <laughs> yeah, it means productivity. Yeah. And I do think that something with leaning into the seasons that I've been trying to focus on is 
happiness is not always the goal like of life is not to just be happy, happy. Everything's perfect all the time. It's to lean into the season of life that you're in. So springtime just happens to be, like I said, a more delightful time, which is fun to lean into it and be like, this is a happy time, new life, new beginnings, creativity, more sun. And then there are times like seasons where it's like, okay, coziness. This is more about resetting. This Mm -hmm. is more about reflection, whatever it is. So um, not that it's like, I I don't want to come across like, finally, we get to be happy, happy. But yeah, it is nice to lean into that theme yes. of delightfulness, sunny. And there's a reason we have seasons mm-hmm. and that every season is different. And yeah. this one happens to be a little bit more of that bright, like, yeah, yeah, happy feelings. Mm-hmm. Um, a couple other things about spring in general. So this is a fun little fact. Daylight savings means there's less crime. So you feel more safe in the spring as well. Interesting. Because it's not dark so much, it doesn't get dark so early. Mm. Um, And a lot of crime happens in the dark. So you just naturally feel a little bit more safe when it's super bright outside all the time. That's interesting. Yeah. And that's probably, well, that is true. Like, I feel like if you're going to, personally, if, you know, I'm going to like a store alone or something and it's bright, I feel way safer than if I'm like walking out with my groceries and it's dark or something. Definitely. So you have more time to do stuff, go out. Men don't have to think about this. Yeah, of course not. This is for the girls. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And it can just make you feel, warmer weather can just make you feel more creative because again, birth of new ideas, creativity. Spring is a great time to be super creative and um, let yourself think of new things to do. So whether that is cleaning your house or starting a little side hustle or finally getting into that hobby that you want to do because a lot of hobbies maybe are outside where it's like, okay, I finally want to get into running or I want to get into hiking or something like that. This is a good time to Mm -hmm. lean in and indulge into those new found hobbies. Um, Last little thing is springtime fruits and vegetables are, I mean, there are different seasonal fruits and vegetables all around the year, but springtime, there's a lot. And so it's a time of year where people tend to eat more fruits and vegetables, Mm. therefore making you feel a little bit better. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to um, read off some of the springtime fruits and vegetables so you guys know. Because sometimes, you know, you can't memorize this. I've tried to like, oh, I'm going to every season lean into the seasonal fruits and vegetables. You got to look it up. Yeah. So lemons, spring fruit, um, spinach, apricot, green peas, artichoke, kiwi, honeydew, mango, lettuce, asparagus are just a few if you're looking to lean into the seasonal fruits and vegetables. But love that. Yeah, that's the intro to spring. Wow. I love springtime. <clears throat> it's Same. always been a favorite of mine. <sighs> I've learned to I've learned to love all the seasons yeah. for the different reasons, I guess, because yeah. I've always been, but I do feel like just because of the sunshine thing, like spring and summer have always just been Good vibes. Yeah. Um, it's exciting. Mm-hmm. When things just start to feel warmer and it feels nice. Yeah. Um, I feel like there's so many ways to clean up your life. I put quotes around that. Mm-hmm. Obviously, cleaning your physical space. When you said it increases productivity, I fully believe that because I have recently been trying to clean out my pantry. Life and I have been like cleaning out our pantry and our fridge and like our spice cabinet and stuff like that and it's just it's so nice to clean that stuff out because it makes my day go so much smoother I've realized like when I'm running out the door and I want to grab a snack when my pantry is cleaned out and it's organized I can like literally see all my options none of it's like expired or whatever and it's like okay here are my granola bars I can either have a granola bar I can have uh chomps I can have something salty like all my options are laid out in front of me instead of like stifling through and being makes the decision seem easier. Yes. It just makes my life easier. And so I think sometimes the problem for me with stuff like this of like spring cleaning, let's have this huge, like, you know, this week or this day or whatever dedicated to cleaning is it really does take, you have to kind of, I I think that it's really good to have these cleanouts, but you kind of have to incorporate it into your lifestyle Mm -hmm. in a way or else for me, I've done things like this where I'm like, I'm going to deep clean and organize my closet. Literally one month later, it's like Back. a disaster again. And so I think it's it's important to kind of try and keep it going. I don't really have 
tangible tips for that. But I think like if you're going to clean out your pantry, maybe once a week, you know, on Sundays or something like that, you can kind of go through and take inventory of like, oh, we have, you know, we're not eating this or this is just a wrapper that's in here that doesn't need to be like kind of keeping up on it. Otherwise, I think yeah. it can just by the next season, it's like, well, now we need a whole nother, you know, mm-hmm. clean out. Mm-hmm. But my recommendation for actually cleaning your space is to go on Google, Pinterest, whatever you want, and just type in spring cleaning checklist. Mm -hmm. This is how my brain works best. I really like a list because I feel like it helps me separate things by rooms and not feel like so overwhelmed. Because when I think of personally all the things that I would need to get organized, I'm just like, where do I even begin? Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like the junk drawer needs to be organized, all the cabinets in my kitchen, the pantry, the fridge. But then I look in my living room and it's like, oh, I have some stuff that I want to get rid of. I want to wash the couch covers. I want to mm-hmm. get the rug cleaned. But then in my office, like I need to organize all that. My closet's kind of overfilled, whatever. So it gets overwhelming. But I looked up on, I think it was on Pinterest, uh, just a spring cleaning checklist. There's a bunch of different ones that you can use. You can all obviously also make your own based on your specific situation. But to give you kind of an idea, it'll be like for the kitchen, like deep clean the um, fridge or like wipe out the fridge and clean it out. Check on all of your spices and your oils and stuff to make sure like nothing's Mm -hmm. expired and throw stuff out, organize them. Um, And it's nice to know, yeah, your ingredients anyways for making things. So sometimes I'll be at the grocery store and I'll have a recipe in mind. I'm like, I'm pretty sure I have, you know, time or something yeah yeah and then I get home and I'm like oh it this is. is expired I haven't touched it in years I know and specifically with our house our current house is like I feel like the the um cabinets are so deep that like we'll yeah. just kind of put stuff everywhere and we were talking about it the other day when we were trying to clean stuff out I'm like these spices have not been touched in a year because they're so yeah. far back it's like I just I only use the ones that are in the front and so it's nice to, yeah, kind of take inventory of what you have and organize them in a way that's like you can accessible. actually see things and they're accessible and your spices aren't two feet back in a cabinet mm-hmm. where you're like, you can't even get to them. Mm-hmm. So also like maybe washing your kitchen rug, cleaning your sink and your drain, disposing of old food, deep cleaning your appliances, cleaning your light fixtures. Like these are all things that were on the kitchen checklist and then it goes to bedroom and it's like wash your linens, mop the floors, clean out your closets, purge and donate. In the laundry room. Oh, this is just making me feel good even just listening to this list. Same. In the laundry room, um, clean dryer vents, clean inside the machines, wipe down surfaces, mop the floor, organize your shelving. In the bathroom, like scrub everything, wash towels, clean your toilet, purge old products. That's another thing. And I think specifically for the girls, Mm -hmm. two things that I think are really good to do seasonally are clean your makeup. Well, you should do this you know, literally once a week. You know what I, I need do to do? Ever. Oh, you're going to say makeup brushes? Yeah. I need to do that. Same. <laughs> really bad. Same. I can't even admit how long it's been, but oh, I need to do it. It's been six so months for me, bad. so. Oh, it's been over that for me. Really? I need to do it so it's bad. It's so bad. I feel like people who really have their life together do Clean that their, like yeah. once every few weeks How do you do that? There's a lot of different cleaners that you can use. I have like two different like makeup cleaner thing. Cause um, I'm always getting them to ruin the texture of the brush. No, you just, there's different um, options, but you usually just like, I have like a beauty blender cleaner that also oh, cleans yeah. brushes and you just kind of like rub the brush on it until it's like, and, and you just, until the water's clear. Yeah. Until the water's mm-hmm. clear. And then you just set like a towel or a paper towel out and just like line your brushes and just let them dry. Okay. I need to order that from Amazon immediately. Yeah. I have, I have two different kinds, but I'm clearly I've never used them. And also, <laughs> sometimes when I'm starting to get like, I'll get like little bumps. I'm like, That's this is probably from my makeup me. brushes. Um, I also think like cleaning out your makeup bag. If you operate from a makeup bag, like for me, I'll have like, you know, my, what's it called? Like the lip liner sharpener will like open and it will like mm-hmm. get all over everything. So there's like little dots of, uh, I don't know. It's just nice to clean out your makeup bag. Yes. And sharpen all your lip yes. liners. I did that recently where I went, I went through, I think it was when I was moving. I went through all my makeup, got rid of things I'd never use, um, kept only like the main things that I use, and I sharpened all my eyeliners, so nice. all my lip liners, and it was so nice to open it up. And I forgot that's how they're supposed to look. I know. They're all like, 
I have, just down I to have, a nub. Yeah, down to a nub and like jagged. And <laughs> I'm like, I just don't use them because yeah. they're not sharpened when I could literally just sharpen them. Mm -hmm. So that is for the girls. Also like organizing your skincare if you just like mm -hmm. haven't used a Also makeup serum. does expire. Yeah, yeah. And so does skincare. So mm -hmm. if you haven't used something in a long time and you're probably not going to use it, like maybe now's the time to get rid of it. Um, anyway, so yeah, for the bathroom, do all of that. Deep clean your shower, living room like clean the upholstery, vacuum your rugs, wash throw blankets and pillows. Yeah. Very important. Clean your TV screen, dust everywhere. And then if you have like an outdoor area, cleaning your doormat. I was like, because, oh. uh, you know, you can track in a lot of like dirt and dust and mm -hmm. stuff. So cleaning that off, um, wiping down windows and outdoor furniture, maybe power washing a patio if you have one. But yeah, there's just so many things. And again, this is just one checklist. There were a ton of different ones. You can obviously just make your own too mm -hmm. because um, there's so many, there's so many more things that you yeah. could clean if you want. And also I think for the closet thing, it's nice to, I've been trying to do this even with pregnancy. Like there are certain things in my closet where it's just like, that's not, I'm not gonna be wearing this for a long time. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say a few months and I'm like, yeah. Maybe even like a year because it's winter vibes and it's my old sizes. So I think it's good to like put away winter clothes in a bin or something mm -hmm. that so that your closet isn't just like so bulky during the spring, especially if you live somewhere where it is warmer. Like for me, I don't need these huge like puffers. winter jackets and puffers in my closet taking up a ton of space when they could be in a bin elsewhere. And I can just have like my cute t-shirts and tank tops and light sweatshirts and stuff. So I think that's always good to do. Um, I have a few other things. Do you want to go down any other rabbit holes with the cleaning? Um, I have, it, it kind of is moving on from space. Like your space is yours. Um, like still, me, if it's still about like house and space, you can keep going. Let me do a few more things. I feel like just once you've kind of deep cleaned things or gotten rid of things and it's feeling a lot clearer, a few ways that I feel like you can give your home a refresh. And we talk about this often. I feel like this is just good to do seasonally. If you can is to maybe get like a new plant, maybe get a new candle, just like something that feels fresh and different than what you're currently used to. Um, if you're on a budget, maybe thrifting like a new vase or a trinket, even if you don't, you know, maybe you already have a plant, but you want to get like a new little pot for it or something. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's just nice to feel refreshed in any way. And I do feel like there are so many ways you can do that for really cheap. Like I said, you could literally go to Goodwill and find like a cute pot or something that you like for $2. And that can just give yeah. you a little, for me at least when I see like new things on my shelves or I have a new plant or I have a new candle, it makes me feel fresh and excited. I have been making lots of protein shakes recently. I feel like it's a great little midday snack or sometimes I'll eat them for breakfast with some other stuff. But it's something that I can like make usually in between breakfast and lunch that just fills me up. I get some protein and it usually just tastes good to me being pregnant. I've been kind of picky with things. And I recently, well, I'm always using Clean Simple Eats protein powder. I love it so much. It's not chalky. It's very, very creamy. I truly believe that there is no better tasting protein powder. But recently I've been using their mint chocolate cookie protein powder. Put some spinach in there, some like oat milk or almond milk, ice. Like you don't really need much because it honestly just tastes so good, but you can add fruit or whatever else you want in there. And it is so creamy, it literally tastes like a mint chocolate milkshake. And it's just the perfect little midday pick me up that is made with great ingredients and gets me some protein in my diet. We love Clean Simple Eats because they are clean and simple. And their protein powder is always grass-fed with no seed oils or artificial ingredients. Third-party tested, non-GMO, gluten-free, all that good stuff. I love their coconut cream flavor as well. It's just a classic and goes so well with different fruits, but I need to try that mint chocolate one. You would love it. Immediately. As You're soon a mint as I get girly. Home. Yeah. Clean Simple Eats really is the most delicious protein powder out there. Honestly, you need to try it if you haven't yet. And each serving has 20 grams of protein, making it the perfect addition to make sure that you hit your protein goals. I know for me personally, sometimes I'm not a big meat person and getting enough protein can actually be a little bit of a struggle. So having a Clean Simple Eats protein shake for a snack or for lunch or something like that is always great and an easy way for me to make sure that I'm getting that protein, which is great, especially being pregnant. 
So visit cleansimpleeats.com and use the code what we said 10 at checkout for 10% off your order. That's cleansimpleeats.com, code what we said 10 for 10% off your order. We'll link it in the show notes for you guys. Go check it out. Yeah, that was one thing I was reading is um, the scents, like using a seasonal scent too. Mm-hmm. So maybe using like more of a citrus scent, like a lemon Yeah, or a scent. floral or mm-hmm. something fresh. Even if it's just an essential oil that you have or yeah, some kind of room spray or something fresh, flowers too. Yeah. I think even like you were saying, um, having a cute new vase for each season mm-hmm. for different kinds of flowers. Like I have, you, and you, you can- acquire this and then use it every spring, right. you know, um, is like a pink face for spring mm-hmm. and then like an orange vase for fall, things like that. So when you yeah. bring it out, it's, it's different. It's new. It's fresh. Definitely. So I feel like those are fun ways and, and it really will boost your motivation to clear out your space, even though it's so again, like typical and people always talk about spring cleaning. I, I think it really is like for me, it makes a huge difference for mm-hmm. me mentally when I don't feel overwhelmed and I don't know if I'm sure other people are like this like I have certain things in my house where it's almost like I've just accepted that they're the way they are when like I had this one plant that died like it just wasn't in the right space and I would just walk by it every day and know that it was like dying and not and then I needed to get a new plant but I just walk by every day and be like in my head it's just like oh there's my dead plant it's like (laughs) you can throw it away you can get a new one you can try to revive it. You can, I don't know. Move it around. Yes. And I feel like sometimes it's just like, even with that office that had kind of just turned into a junk room in my head, I'm just like, oh yeah, that's my junk room. And I'm like, (laughs) wait, (laughs) yeah, I have the power to change that and have that not be a space that stresses me out. So I think if there's things like that in your life where it's like, oh yeah, this drawer is just a mess. It's like, well, we can organize it and Mm -hmm. it could feel good and that would be amazing. So I do feel like it has a lot of correlation with your mental health when things feel clear, you feel clearer. It's, I'm big into energy and I feel like it just releases stagnant energy quite literally from the winter. Specifically, you're feeling cozy. You're not going out much. Things are becoming very stagnant Mm -hmm. in your house, which again, you can lean into the coziness and the, you know, comfortability of it. But then once springtime comes, you want to release that stagnant energy. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I don't know much about feng shui, but I've looked into it a little bit when I, sometimes when I do furniture, because I'm like, I just want to have good energy flow flow in here. Um, It's got, there's got to be something to it. Like cleaning out a drawer, getting rid of certain things, it releases that energy and helps you just think, have some more clarity. I believe that. Well, I have this little, fun little graphic that I have had for a while saved. So I'm sorry, I have no, I don't know who made it, but- I've seen that on Pinterest. It's really cute. Um, It's like cleansing for new seasons. So this is not specific to spring, but these are just some prompts that you can kind of think about um, for different areas of your life. This is what I put on my, I cut out these different parts and put them on my vision board for each new season. So first is body. Again, I already talked about the local seasonal vegetables and fruits. You can ease into seasonal sleep patterns, daylight shifts. So with spring, you know, your sleep pattern is going to be a little bit different. Um, Embrace seasonal activities for more natural movement, just leaning into the cycle of it. Um, Because I do think we, as human beings and nature in general, animals, plants, they go along with the seasons. Mm -hmm. So we need to as well. I feel like fighting it is not helpful. Um, For your mind, you can journal regularly, create seasonal affirmations, Um, do a social media cleanse, I think is good for spring specifically, unfollow people, mute people. If there's something that you just don't want to see, or if you want to follow someone new that gives you new fresh Mm -hmm. energy, don't unfollow us, (laughs) but (laughs) we'll keep it fresh. Exactly. We'll always keep it fresh. Yeah. Don't worry. (laughs) Um, and then here's just some prompts that you can either journal with or just leave thinking about, um, this season I want to feel sorry. Blank. Can I take a, yeah. can I say something? As you were saying that, please do. <laughs> I'm like, can I speak on this podcast? <laughs> um, as you're saying that I was thinking, I feel like the best people that I follow, not that, I mean, this is putting a lot of pressure on someone, but I feel like the best people that I follow kind of, I don't know if they're doing it intentionally or not, but the common denominator I'm thinking is that they always like post fresh stuff 
And I don't know if they're going along with the seasons per se, but I don't know. That just kind of hit me where I was like, I feel like my favorite people to follow, like really switch things up and will be like kind of lean into different, like do like seasonal mm -hmm. outfits and photo shoots and stuff. Um, they go I don't do that. So <laughs> I'm working on that. But <laughs> I was just thinking even like Amber, obviously she's always, she's always in top spo, of mind, top of mind, <laughs> always thinking about her. Um, but I was just oh, thinking how early. she'll be like making, you know, like fresh squeezed orange juice mm -hmm. during citrus season and doing photo shoots with citrus. But then when yeah. it's winter, she's like going into cozy mode and, and showing her fireplace and her journaling and scrapbooking. I don't know. Yeah. I was just thinking it really is nice to obviously follow someone new if you want some fresh energy. But as like someone who's a creative, that's super important yeah. to like freshen don't up be your vibe and your energy and post stuff that's kind of. Yeah. Seasonal. I don't know. I like that. Keep things moving along. Mm -hmm. um, some other prompts. This season I'm actively manifesting. We kind of did that last time. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think that's a good thing to do. Things, ideas, stories I'm ready to put down this season include blank. What do I need to pick up or, or shift the season to me to be my most honest self? I love that one. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's another one where you can keep things fresh for yourself and just... Again, really stagnant energy of maybe a habit that you've had or if you've been dealing with something, even mental health wise or a worry that you've been having or, you know, something that's been bothering you that you've just been ruminating on. Yeah. It's good to shift and be, you know, think of ways to get through it, whether that's <laughs> therapy or doing something like trying out a new hobby, whatever it is, mm -hmm. um, to kind of help you get back to that inner voice and just be your best self. What desires are rising in me in this current season of life? What do I want to make more time for? What parts of you or stories within you are asking to be seen and known during this season, mm. which I loved that one as well. Um, so yeah, that was pretty much all I had for seasonal prompts and uh for you guys to take away because I I feel like a lot of what I talked about last episode like manifestations for March was <laughs> cleaning vibes and new life like yeah I um it's fun to give birth in the spring because yeah. I was thinking I mean last time I gave birth it's fun to have a baby anytime but last time I had case in the winter obviously mm -hmm. it was like cozy time this is a new vibe it's like springtime things are brighter things are you know, there's more daylight, so it's going to be a different vibe. It'll be a different and, experience, like postpartum probably. Yeah. And I do feel like last time I was more, right before I gave birth, I was in my cozy era. Mm -hmm. Like I was watching Christmas movies. I was just home, like nesting. And this time my nesting <laughs> urges feel like cleaning, different. getting new, you know, getting rid of that old energy and like bringing in new things and trying to get ready for a big new change. Mm hmm and so that's all really all I've been doing and what I plan to be doing for the next couple of months is just, well, postpartum, not really planning on cleaning. Yeah. But I'm kind of prepping. Be done and before that. Yeah. Something that I was reading too is people were saying for spring cleaning, it's kind of nice to do the spring cleaning before spring or like the as spring is yeah. beginning. So it would be awesome. Today. <laughs> I'm like, you need to get on it today, you guys. But it's it's nice to kind of, get it done so that you can enjoy spring and you can enjoy the weather and everything mm -hmm. is feeling clearer. Um, just a few other little things that I had is, is like kind of what you were mentioning, like a digital clean. And I feel like there are also so many ways that a rebrand, yeah, a rebrand and a refresh. We're always trying to rebrand, <laughs> uh, that I feel like your digital space can also clutter your mind in so many ways as well as your physical. So some things that I had written down is to like unsubscribe from emails that you don't want to be subscribed to, delete apps that you're not using, look at your subscriptions and your finances using Rocket Money. Yeah, I don't know I love that. I, I hope they're a sponsor today. I know, I hope they are. I love Rocket Money Same. so much. Like they are, this is not a sponsored section, but truly like Rocket Money is so great and has actually saved me money. So that is amazing to look at like your subscriptions that you're using that you're not, mm -hmm. or sorry, that you're not using, that you're paying for. Um, I've had multiple subscriptions that are like draining yeah. my freaking bank account that I didn't realize I was paying for. So that's nice. Um, 
reading your texts. Sometimes I get behind on texts and I'll be like, you know, I'll have like 20 that are unread. I know some people get to a point where they have hundreds that are unread. Um, but just either just marking them all as read and being like, <laughs> I release this burden mm -hmm. or going through replying to people. <laughs> I was about to be like apologizing to them, but sometimes it, <laughs> you know, it takes like, Hey, sorry. I have been so behind on this. I've been meaning to text you back whatever, just kind of like doing, acknowledgement. Yeah. Acknowledging things. If someone like has called you and you haven't called them back, just, I, th I feel like, again, there are so many things on our phones that can even just stress us out. Yeah. And the last one I had was organize your photos. So whether it's on your phone or your computer, that's something that that's probably one of the only ways in my life that I'm actually, I would say extremely organized is with all of my photos, specifically on my computer. I have hard drives, which none of them were labeled until like, I don't I think I posted it on my story maybe like six months ago. I went through and labeled my hard drives by year, which was helpful. But, um, so that, that in that way they weren't organized, but on the actual hard drives, it's like so specific. I have like, you know, January, 2021 film mm -hmm. photos, digital photos. Like I'm very organized with my photos because I have to be, because I always have taken so many. And if I just put them all on a hard drive, I'm like, I will never be able to find what I'm looking for. But I think that that's a great way. Even on my phone lately, I've been making albums of like, I have one for pregnancy. I have one for IVF. I have one for our new house. And it's so nice because when people are like, wait, I want to see the progress on your new house. I can go to the new house album. And it's like, every, all my photos from the new house are in that album. And it's just, yeah. it's nice. It like, to me, it just makes my life more seamless and easier. So that's also something maybe to add to a checklist if you're stressing out about any of those areas and not to like stress you out because you don't need to do all of these things. But I think yeah. there are countless ways. Like I've always said like boredom doesn't exist to me because there are so many things, so you many things you can do. So if you're ever feeling like bored or stagnant, like you do any of these things yeah. and I feel like it will just improve your life. Definitely. So I, um, Speaking of albums, when you were saying that, I was just um, thinking of a cute little album that I have as an idea for new parents out there is I have an album called Details I Never Want to Forget. And I oh, will cute. literally like this. I did this more when- On Keith your was, phone? Yeah, on my phone. Okay. Um, and this is kind of <laughs> along the lines of like keeping your baby's teeth and things like that. But, you know, maybe- <laughs> It's just like dance. photos of his hair. <laughs> Literally, like I will, if, if they're sleeping or something and yeah. you, you have these moments where you're looking at their face and you're just like, I never want to forget the way that their nose is like right now. It's so tiny. Look at their tiny little lips. Like I'll like yeah. snap a photo and put it in there. And it's fun to look back on now that he's two. Like I'll look back on photos of him as a little baby, like his hands or something or um, him eating with like a mess on his face Aww. where it's not like, I don't put photos in there every day, but every once in a while when you have that thought of like, oh, I, w I wish I could just like keep bottled this up like yes. your face during this or like your whatever um even their hair like their little details yeah. that you as a parent are the only one who really cares about. yeah but it's a fun little album to have that I'm very glad that I did that's so cute yeah. I have I was just about to send you the other day a photo of case I was shocked I'm like <laughs> everyone says it but it's just yeah. really crazy how fast they yeah. like grow up and just it was develop from into when Leif and I were watching him one time and like him and Leif were playing in our yard yeah and I'm like He's tiny. Tiny. He's a baby. Like, I know. I'm just like, oh my gosh, he's grown up so much. It was shocking me. I need to send it to you. It was literally the cutest photo. But um, yeah, that's so cute. I feel like there's just so many ways to get organized. Yeah. I love leaning into a new season. I love like an excuse to... Also, I feel like this has been a theme on our podcast for literally ever, but you can also kind of romanticize these moments of cleaning. Like it doesn't have to be this dreadful, like this thing you're dreading. I feel like you can put on a playlist, put on a podcast or mm -hmm. do it silently. Obviously, if you want to be alone with your thoughts, um, <laughs> no, thanks. <laughs> not my cup of tea, but <laughs> no, but even just like putting on your headphones and being like, I'm dedicating the next two hours to, you know, whatever I can get done on this checklist. And listening to something that you enjoy, maybe making a, tr a drink that you enjoy or going to grab something and treating yourself, like yeah. kind of making it a little moment and it feels so good. And sometimes it doesn't take as long as you think it will. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you just got to start because even a room or a closet or a drawer, you're like, oh, this is going to take forever. You've been putting it off because you think it will take forever. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, if you just get down to it and you dedicate 
okay, for the rest of this afternoon, I'm going to clean out this closet, whatever it is. You'll be surprised. It will take you a while, but you might be surprised at how in the scheme of things, you've been waiting months to do this, mm-hmm. but it actually took you one afternoon. It's to true. To finish it. Also, I will end with this. My last recommendation, this is just for people who I guess like, this is all I have to go. How I operate is all I have to go off of. Number one, the checklist thing I think is really helpful, especially yeah. if you're feeling overwhelmed. Like that's I a really good a way. Cleaning list. Yeah. It's really nice. And then it feels gratifying when you're checking things off. So that's nice. But number two is just to sometimes do it when inspiration or motivation strikes. And mm-hmm. that sometimes is unexpected. Like for me, sometimes I won't be planning on it, but then like something in me just the other day when I was cleaning out the pantry, like something in me just sparked and I got home from grocery shopping and I'm like, I just don't want to put all these groceries away in an already like Mm -hmm. hectic space. So I cleaned it out for like probably 40 minutes, just my little pantry. And it felt so good. And I had the time, like it was a weekend and whatever, but um, that happened to me too with my office. It was like 5 PM on a random day, but I was like, I want to. So I'm just going to get to it, spend an hour or two doing it. And I don't know if that's good advice or bad, but I feel like sometimes you can't plan your motivation. We're talking about rowback, you guys. I have seen a lot of girlies playing pickleball and tennis. I don't know if it's like the springtime is coming and we're trying to be active, you know, trying to be cutesy. But you you know what you need if you're playing pickleball, tennis, golf. As a girl, you need a little fun dress, like a fun little active dress. And rowback has some of those. I think it's called the demi active dress. They have like three or four different colors and... I just feel like it's nice to have kind of like a form-fitting, you know, maybe like feminine, girly, active wear look to wear sometimes to play these fun little sports. So if you are in the market, you should definitely check it out. They also have just a new woman's line in general. They have like joggers and hoodie sets made with super soft, good quality fabrics. I also saw cute like pullover, little like half zip fleece situation. So maybe if you live somewhere a little chillier, that could be a good option for you too. If you have a boyfriend, husband, brother, whatever, someone in your life that golfs, they've probably already heard of Roback. But now, like JC said, they have a new women's line. And we love that because a lot of times guys will get the soft clothes and they'll get the really comfortable clothes. And you're like, wait, why are the women's stuff so uncomfortable? But Roback, they're not the same. They're built different, quite literally. They're so soft. You can wear them like we were talking about on the court, on the golf course, but also it's cute to just wear around town, you know, on a little coffee run, running errands, things like that. They call their fabric, their GTG technology, and it's so comfortable, lightweight, breathable fabric. Go check them out for sure. If you haven't already, it's now time to try out some Roback. Use the code what we said on Roback.com for a generous 20% off your first order through the end of this week. That's spelled R-H-O-B-A-C-K. Dot com. That's 20% off all hoodies, joggers, crews, and more with code what we said. Stay comfortable this spring with Roback. I'm laughing because I do that all the time, but because of how not possible some tasks are for me, I will act on my inspiration. Like but make Nick, Nick do it too. Has to do it yeah. In that moment. Like I'll be like, we, we got a package for these little, I got this cute little cafe curtain to go in our kitchen window. Mm-hmm. We have to cut it you have to go to Home Depot get the rod cut drill in mm. and last night at seven I start opening the package he's like <laughs> what's happening he's like, like don't worry. Don't strike for me. <laughs> yeah he's like I'm doing other things um uh, and I'm like we're let's just do this they'll be super fast let's just do it get it over with we don't have to worry about it anymore and he's like do you realize how many times you've been doing this in the last couple weeks especially because I can't some of the things I can't do I can't bend over yeah. I can't reach up higher like he doesn't want me climbing on a ladder or something yeah. to do it so I'll get out like these, like even the painting thing when he was on, he was joking that I went and got the sample. (laughs) Yeah. He's like, this requires me as well. Like it's not just me. I do the same thing. Yeah. When I'm like, when I was cleaning out my closet, I'm telling Mm -hmm. you, it was like 5 p.m. on a Tuesday. And (laughs) then I'm like, Leif. Can you take these to my car? Oh my gosh. Yeah. He's like, I, and he was in the middle of something. I'm like, I can't read. He's like, okay, this was not on my plan. I'm like, Mm -hmm. but it was on mine. You (laughs) know, I have to act on my inspiration. Yes. You know what I just did? Um, I'll tell you a couple of the, the recent things that I've been doing, my nesting, whatever, for. The, they're really not that important to anyone else, but to me, I'm like, this needs to be done. It's like at the forefront of my mind. So I changed all of my hangers to the Ooh, same that's hanger. that's nice. I love that. And I just had, 
I would buy like 20 hangers at a time. Like, oh, we need more hangers. And I'd buy a different color and different, Mm -hmm. (laughs) just, I don't know. I just had tons of different hangers and it was looking so cluttered in my closet. And I just decided to order a ton of hangers from Amazon, all wood Mm -hmm. and in these packs. And it wasn't as expensive as I thought, but I was like, this is kind of an unnecessary expense. But when it's done, I know it's going to feel so good to have these hangers. It's reminding me of when I worked at anthropology to have them perfectly spaced Mm -hmm. out. And like, that will just feel, make my closet feel so good. Yes. And Nick just sees this Amazon package, Amazon packages huge boxes and I'm like does is the wood kind of thick though like does it take up a lot of space in your not closet? really oh really I'll I'll link it on my Amazon store okay. for you guys <laughs> the ones that I use the shirt ones are pretty thin mm. and then I would or I ordered like Thicker that's the other ones. thing like pant ones yeah. or like clip ones but they're all like matching and I ordered mm. case all matching ones and the baby all matching ones it was again an unnecessary expense but to me it felt very necessary oh I'm sure and it probably feels so organized now yes oh it it looks Would so much better. Would you consider your closet like a good size or no in your current house? Yeah. Yeah. It's a pretty good size. It's like, a, it's definitely bigger than I've ever had. I've never really had a walk-in. Mine is so like poorly, I guess just built. organized and built. Like it's it's not tiny. It's, it's a walk-in closet, but like me and Leif can't comfortably like stand in there together. Yeah. Like it's, there's not a ton of room. But lately I'm just like so confused because I'm like, I feel like I have no clothes, but like my closet, the stuck. closet is stuffed. Like yeah. I can't fit anything else. And I don't know if it's like Leif said, I just have so many like sweat sets and things that are thicker. Yeah. But I'm like, why is my closet feeling so stuffed yet? Every time I go to get ready, like there's no option. And yeah. maybe it's the pregnancy thing, whatever. But I was looking at my closet and I'm like, there's so much wasted space. Like there's mm-hmm. so much space where I just guess I need to get like organizational bins and I need to do yeah. it myself. But that's the thing with closets that's you got you with closets is you have to have things accessible because yeah. otherwise they just get stuffed in like a box yes. or a bin and you, you can't never wear reach it. down and it gets really messy and it's, and it's annoying because it you is. have to have a well-built closet yeah. to have like this perfect, oh, these drawers that I can see all of my workout stuff. It's really annoying. I know. I, I'm and trying not really yeah, easy to do or get. I know I'm trying to with our new house like I want it to be so mm-hmm. organized and like efficient and done so well. I'm like yeah. okay just another thing to like really worry about because I I don't want to just be like eh just throw up shelves and then I get in there and I'm like this mm-hmm. is not You want to use the the amount of room you have yeah. and take advantage of it. Yeah, for sure. So we'll see. And I ordered a t- I counted so many of my clothes to see how many hangers I needed to get and I wanted to get extra obviously cuz I knew that I didn't want to just keep buying new ones, but um, I went through every, had to go through every item Mm -hmm. in my closet. And so did Nick. And we got rid of so much stuff. And I realized I had ordered so many more hangers than I needed to, but I had counted them. So I was like, oh, I actually just got rid of so much stuff Mm. that I never worn. So it was a double, it was a double win. Nice. Yeah. It was um, um, very necessary, I thought. Yeah, it's, oh, it's so nice to get mm-hmm. rid of stuff. There's nothing that feels better to me. Yeah, I reorganized all of cases, room, drawers, like added separators. Because like sometimes I would just throw things into certain drawers, but it's nice to have little separators. That is really nice. Yeah. And I, you can use I like got, household items, like boxes, shoe boxes yeah. to do, use like separators and stuff. I got an Amazon um, separator thing for my like underwear drawer. So it's like underwear, mm-hmm. bras, socks, um, Pilates socks. Like I have it all organized. And that's, that was one of my best purchases. Like mm-hmm. I've used it for a year and I'm like, it's pretty organized yeah. in there. Like it never really gets crazy. I need to do that for my workout stuff. Yeah. That's really nice. Um, I know I got rid of all my old underwear because mm-hmm. you know how you're supposed to get new underwear pretty often. How often? Apparently, I don't know what the official is, but it's definitely like if you have underwear that's over two years old, for sure. Mm. Um, I mean, and that, that comes up fast. Yeah, it does. Like I will have underwear. I'm like, I remember certain events I wore this underwear to, and that was a long time the ago. The thing is, all my underwear is the same. Like I only have nude thong or like nude skims. Oh, so you don't remember Thongs which and bras. Like I would have no idea what's new mm. and what's not, honestly. They all look identical. I have like that's two true. pairs of underwear that are different. Yeah. But they're pretty much all just the same. Yeah. It's my uniform. Well. Well, <laughs> stay tuned for that journey. <laughs> um, thank you guys for listening to our spring cleaning episode. Was there anything else you wanted to say? No, that was it. 
I loved that. I these episodes just make me feel good inside. Nick's up. Nick's in for a rude awakening because I'm feeling cleany today. You're feeling good today. Same. <laughs> I'm feeling organized. I'm ready to hang some more curtains and artwork. That's another thing. I'll be. Like, I'll get a painting. Come like art. Come yeah. home. We need to hang this immediately. Can you get the leveler? Can you, you know what? Leather? I feel like you honestly. Neither of us. I feel like we've turned over new leaves. Yeah. I feel like you. Maybe you have been like that. Well. Been what? I feel like we have always been like notorious procrastinators, both of yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I feel like recently, I, I still am. someone who doesn't buy art. I'm like, well, not really. No, no, I no, no, no. I feel like, because when you say like, oh, I come home and I'm like, we need to hang this. Yeah. I'm like, that does not seem in character for you. Really? But maybe, maybe it is. And I just don't know that about you. Yeah, maybe because you don't live with me. I feel because like that's I, actually one of my worst characteristics. Really? Well, but you're not like that in a lot of what? areas. I will say it's either now or never. Okay. <laughs> That's more how it is. So yeah. maybe you always see my nevers where it's like, if I don't do it now, it's just not like, it's happening. not getting done. Yeah. Which is why I feel this urge every time. Okay. We have to do this now or I'll forget about it. And I'll sit in my closet for 10 years. Cause I think we've talked about this, but like Chelsea and I, neither of us had clean rooms in high school. No, no, Like no, our no. rooms were always disasters. No. Both of us. Yeah. But it would kind disasters. of. Disasters. Honestly, like kind of the same personality, obviously I, the same person, like I would kind of have moments where I'd be like, this ends now. Mm -hmm. And like deep, like, <laughs> like <now>. organize <laughs> everything in my room. But it would come very, not very often. Um, or my mom would like come help me. We would just like organize everything. It'd be so perfect. But then again, mm -hmm. like a month later, it's a disaster again. Yeah. Um, but I feel like we, I have kind of, at least in like my bedroom now, my bedroom's never like disastrous. No. I have other rooms in my house <laughs> yeah. that are not that great. But I feel like- I've turned over a new leaf, at least yeah. in that area. No, I definitely didn't used to be like that when I was like in college or high school. Yeah. I feel like I actually was just telling Nick about this. I was opening up and, and trauma dumping on him about how <laughs> I was so sick of being so dirty all the time, like mm -hmm. so unorganized. My house was always a mess. Like my mom never, love you, mom. <laughs> she would always say like, the purpose of life is not to clean all the time. Like she had so many kids. And so I would- I never really like learned how to clean mm -hmm. properly. I mean, she tried to teach us, but also I just never did. Like my yeah. personality, I was just like, whatever. I never cleaned my room until, yeah, it got to a point of like, you can't see the floor. Wait, my mom told me the most toxic thing I said what? when I was a kid. Continue. Wait, don't, no, let me forget. Me. don't let me forget. Okay. Um, anyway, so then when I got married, I switched. I feel like a mm. year or so into, I read the magic of tidying up. Mm. And I feel like ever since then, I've actually been pretty, I mean, my house will get messy every once in a while. Don't get me wrong. But, um, I feel like I actually went the other way where mm. I will get very stressed about it. Like I will be stressed I, out if things are messy and yeah. unorganized. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I try to stay, I get keep like that things too. tidy as much as possible and get things done, get things out of boxes, get things, you know? Yeah. Obviously, there are different seasons of life. When I'm sick and pregnant, that falls to the wayside. Yeah, but. definitely. Anyways, what were you saying? No, my mom was telling me how, oh my gosh, when I was like 12 or 13, because my mom's a very like clean, organized person for the most part. And she, you know, would always be like, okay, you guys have to clean your bathroom. Like you need to, you know, organize. She would always encourage me to like make my bed. Like it would feel really good if you made your yeah. bed in the morning. And yeah. I'd be like, why? I'm yeah. going to get back in it at night. I like, know my mom would always say, it takes a shorter amount of time to go put this away than if you left it here and then you had to go clean it up later. Yeah. So anyway, she, I guess was saying something about like, she was like teaching me, I could be getting the story kind of wrong, but this is the gist of it. Like she was teaching me how to clean my uh, <laughs> bathroom. Like mm -hmm. this is how you clean a toilet. Like you need to like clean around the sink right here or whatever. And I was just like, not interested. interested. And I was just like, I don't care about this. Like, and she's like, well, you have to clean. Like, she, and she said something to the effect of, so what about when you get older and you have your own house? Like, what are you going to do then? And I was like, hire someone to clean it. <laughs> I was like, I'm not cleaning it. Oh and she's like, gosh. okay. And she goes, I literally said, okay, I hope you can afford that. Like, yeah, we'll see. And anyway, now that I'm older, I'm like, who did you think you were? Like little 12 year old who grew up like, yeah with not a lot of money, like yeah. just being like, I'll just hire someone. So scary probably for your mom. My imagine, mom's like, imagine yikes. your kid says that to you. you you're like, <laughs> I was oh, like, no. oh, that's very Capricorn coded and like so hire entitled. Someone. Like I'll just hire someone to do it. When my mom literally is like deep cleaning our whole mm -hmm. house. Like we never had maids or something. Yeah. Like I don't even know where I'm getting this. 
the gall. I don't know where mm-hmm. I'm getting the audacity, but I was like, oh, that is so, my mom was telling me that the other day. I'm like, that is hilarious. Geez. I know. <laughs> like, well, I'm not doing it. Mm-hmm. Oh, anyway. I know. Me and Nick have both, I, maybe it's just growing up because yeah. me and Nick both are now very clean people where we're like, we both clean at night. We both clean in the morning. We both are cleaning up all the time. I just feel things. like there's, for me, again, if if I'm like doing well mentally and yeah. and everything, that's another huge factor. Yeah, it is. Things it is because no one wants to live in like a messy space. No. Sometimes it really is like you know you're having a hard time, and I mm-hmm. understand that completely. But I think if I'm doing well, and and I always say this like if when it's just Leif and I, I'm like there's literally no excuse. Like mm-hmm. we're both capable humans to have just like a messy house all the time. I feel like come on, like we got to get it. We got to get it together. Yeah. Especially we don't have the excuse of having like kids who are messing it up. It's like, it's literally just two capable adults who Mm -hmm. are doing fine in life. We need to make sure that we're cleaning up. Yeah. And when you are, we'll end this soon, but when you are another note cleaning up, um, I feel like me and Nick are constantly tidying up after case during nap times or whatever, you know, after bedtime, not while he's cleaning, I'm not following him around picking up his toys or anything like that. But it also makes you very aware of what you are purchasing and what you are bringing into the home. Because you know, if you let it go and you let things, you know, become super messy, then you stop paying attention. If something comes into the house, like junk, you don't care. It's just like, yeah, whatever, add it. But if you're always aware, you're like, I don't want to clean that up. I don't want to add that to my nightly routine. So you're way more- It makes you more intentional. Yeah, especially, I mean, I was thinking specifically with toys. Like, yeah we're not buying that many toys so that we don't always have to constantly be cleaning things up because this is the other thing with kids is that they don't, this is a completely different tangent, but um, we will go to this one store and it has this play kitchen and it has these play ice cream cones. Mm -hmm. I feel like most parents who have toddlers know what ice cream things I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. It's just like you stack them. They're like magnets, whatever, or um, stick to each other. Mm -hmm. And we'll go to the store and Case will love it at the store. He won't leave. He won't want to leave. He mm-hmm. wants to play with it at the store all the time. So for Valentine's Day, I bought him the ice cream. I'm like, oh my gosh, he's going to be Obsessed. so excited. Yeah. He loves us. He literally wants to cry when we leave the store. Bought it for him. Couldn't care less after a day. Was so excited the first day, but like does not care about them anymore. <gasps> and I just thought about that. I'm like, we don't need to be buying all these toys that we think out in the real life they love. Like, oh, he loves seeing planes. So we have to bring a bunch of planes into the house. It's like, it loses the flavor for that quickly. It it appears. Yeah. That has nothing to do with spring cleaning, but (laughs) well, kind (laughs) of, um, okay. Well, we're going to end this now. Thank Mm -hmm. you guys so much for listening. Make sure you're following along on YouTube. Thank you for 10,000 subscribers. Yeah, we hit it. That's exciting. Um, if you want to watch, watch us on YouTube, you can do that or follow our Instagram to keep updated. It's at what we said podcast. You can be involved in our episodes and stuff or just listen on Apple and Spotify. But we love you guys so, so much. And that's That's what what we said. said. Bye.